Hello there, my YouTube family. How are you? I am so happy to be with you again this morning. As always, I am so appreciative of the great comments that you make and the fact that you are like and sharing the pages with others and I and these videos with others. And I am so glad that these videos are a source of strength and encouragement to you and it's given many of you knowledge and understanding about some of the things that you're going through. Many of you couldn't understand it. It didn't add up. It didn't make sense. And it seemed like you were off that something was wrong with you. Now you know that you are totally logical and uh, knowledgeable about what you are going through. You just can explain the contents of the situation. And I appreciate many of you that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Please continue to like and share the page. Encourage your friends that may be going through uh, a relationship that they don't understand. And you know that they are involved with a narcissist. But many people don't know what that is. And they are so mesmerized by the love bombing. The initial stage of the relationship was so overwhelming. You thought you had found the perfect person, the per perfect female the perfect male it was the only relationship that you had that the moment you met him it seemed like you knew him forever within a week you found yourself madly deeply in love with them and it seemed like you knew them they seemed like they was miss right mr right it seemed like that how did they ever get away from the previous person that they were involved in they're so right they're so understanding they're so caring because when the narcissist uh, first uh, build a relationship with you, introduce the relationship and come into the entry of the relationship. They are so uh, understanding. They want to know everything about you. The whole relationship is seem like it's about you. So they're gathering information, gathering all of this data. Nobody took that time to even care about what you think, what you feel, and you felt comfortable sharing even the weaknesses of your life and all of the things that you struggle with. I mean, they seem like the perfect friend and their ears was all open no matter what you said, no matter what time it was. And it seemed like they could couldn't wait to get back with you to talk with you and you thought this is the perfect individual and as time went on the mask came off and you start questioning little things start happening and you start excusing them anytime you excuse what is wrong it builds a platform for more wrong and that's exactly what started to happen the mass came out and the narcissist was able to commit more do more but what the narcissist does in the midst of the abuse they love you and remember you keep going back to the love bombing the initial love bombing like a person who's on drugs they go back to that initial high how everything was initially how the drug took them to ecstasy and they keep looking for the first high well it was the first high you never get the first a second time third time you only get that one time so you keep looking for what you had that would never ever be again but it was so intensive it became the role model it became the map of what you were looking for and everything went into a comparative analysis of the initial relationship and one thing you notice that the narcissist was an expert in dissonance that what happens is no matter what you tried to bring together they were experts to make sure everything did not meet congruency that there was always chaos that there was always division that there was always deception and they made sure that you start to struggle with your reality until you start creating a fantasy world and you live within the fantasy world where the narcissist knows what that is because most narcissists live within a fantasy world a world that they created that does not exist but it allowed them to handle pressure because they create that pressure into what 
whatever they want. And narcissists, because a lot of their attention span is so short and they want to be entertained and they want attention all the time. What happens is when something become long term, it bores them. They need something different. They need an interlude. And so what they do is create chaos in your world so you can create this false world in your mind because many people cannot deal with pressure. They run away from pressure. If you are a person that cannot deal with pressure and you have a tendency to run, you are very loved by the narcissist because your bridge break down easy. That means what you have built, the, the stresses is like corrosion. It start corroding the strength of you. It start uh, corroding the togetherness, the, uh, uh, the adhesive of your mind, what kept you together, what kept you strong, what kept you focused. Dissidence comes in and destroys all harmony of that and it calls disunity and this unity first displays into your mind it displays into your thoughts and your imagery gets distorted and then it displays in your emotion where you cannot tabulate the reality of what you feel you always question what you feel so you no longer now know what are true feelings because the narcissist can love you today hate you tomorrow he can appreciate something you do for him today or her today and the next thing you know the very thing they told you they love they hate Hate. And they are experts of uh, cognitive uh, uh, dissidents. They want the mind to be in a disarray because wherever your mind is, your life is set into motion according to your mind. If your thoughts are off, your life is off. If your thoughts are burdened and sad, then your life is burdened and sad. If your thoughts is in an unrealistic world, then the real environmental aspect of your life seem like you're floating. And many of you have said that seem like I'm floating through life. I'm trying to get my footing, but it's like I'm not touching ground. And it's like when I touch ground, the pain that is caused in this relationship is so horrific until I feel like I'm losing my mind. You will not lose your mind. That's exactly what the narcissists want. They want you to lose your mind. Do you know the more pain that you incur, the more happy uh, happiness you cause the narcissist? The narcissist is empty, void. The narcissist want to feel love. And only thing they have in their mind, what love is, is when they love bond you, they watch how you respond to them. And your response to them told them what you you expected for love to be. They take all of your expectations and that becomes the life of the narcissist because everything they have go to a negative realm. It goes to a negative aspect and there's nothing positive than what the, other than what they can incur for someone else. They're always using someone. They're always triangling someone. They're always lying. They're always manipulating, gaslighting, devaluating. So there's always all this negativity that's with them. They're always burdened in heavy and the only way they get light it's when you are burdened and heavy when you see a happy narcissist someone is miserable desperately extremely miserable because the narcissist cannot handle your joy handle your peace handle your promotion handle your success in order for a narcissist and some narcissists people say they look for weak women where well, you can explain weak women or weak men because some narcissists that are in the arena of power they meet powerful women or powerful men and so they have to learn how to manipulate power you manipulate on the level of exposure if you're exposed to power Power, you learn to manipulate power. If you're exposed to a person who's insecure, you learn to manipulate insecurity and weakness. But when you are dealing with power, you have to deal with these women. You have to deal with these men in a different way because they are not one who, they, I mean, they have their own, they have their own business. They have their own, uh, a life going for them. They're educated. They have their own money. They have their own resources. So they're doing things 
for themselves and 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 they're not dependent on anyone else they're independent so what the narcissist does when he goes into strength in order to manipulate strength you usually have to turn strength into vanity you cause that strength to look upon itself within itself and the, that that strength gets so caught up within with what it is until Everything outside does not matter. And the narcissist take vanity. The narcissist is constantly telling you how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are, uh, how much they love you, how much they want you, how much they adore you, um, how beautiful you smell, how shapely your body is, how intelligent you, is, you are. And that's usually in the beginning. And so a person who is, has a scheduled life, that means their time is pinned in, their moments is pinned in, everything is calculated and accountable, and they don't waste time. You have to manipulate these people in a different instances. And don't think because you are powerful that you won't get caught up with the narcissist. You very well can get caught up with the narcissist. You very well can get manipulated anybody has an open door of weaknesses that's why you must be alert and usually when we meet the narcissist there's something in our mind that is trying to warn us that something about this isn't right that you need to step back and look at this a little more but you are so caught up in the fact that someone is giving you time someone is taking time someone is interested in you and it feels it feels a feels it feels and many times our feeling get uh it overrides our wisdom because our wisdom is saying something is wrong here something don't click here why am i falling too quick how is this guy able to do this there's been several men or several women who have entered my life and they have not been able to mesmerize and captivate me like this but this person right here oh my god it's like you could have been married uh and or uh, divorce whatever and they just seem like the streamline they seem like perfection has finally hit your life but when you get cognitive dissidents that separate your mind that scatter your mind that scatter your thoughts that interrupt your peace that interrupt your euphoria that it does not allow you to lay simple it's always harassment going on in your mind every word they release your mind fights it and you take up their words and now you got a battlefield in your mind you're fighting all day you get up with the fight in your mind you never know what is real and what's not real you never know what is going to solidify for the day because things change not every week they can change every day the narcissist can be one minute in the morning and then they got a different attitude in the evening your house is constantly reeling and rocking and you are trying not to take it out on the children take it not out on your employees but on the inside of you you are in turmoil because there's constant dissidence inside of you nothing is harmonizing nothing is coming together you look at yourself your eyes look empty i mean they look void they look dull and it seemed like you can look in your eyes and never find an ending point never find a stop sign never find a yield sign when you look in your eyes it just keep going into emptiness and more emptiness and more darkness and the way your eyes look is the way your mind think and the way your mind think is the way you live your life you don't live your life where you plan anymore because you don't have hope when you don't have hope you don't look for a future every day is now every day every moment count now because you have no future the dissidence that the narcissist bring in your life is to captivate you to take you on a vacation that is not real to get you sailing in a sea that is not real that is not an ocean that is sand and the sand look like the sea and in your mind you won't happen it's so bad until you pretend that what you want exists you pretend that the narcissist love you you pretend that the narcissist is faithful you pretend that when he make love to you that is you you that he's thinking about that is you that she's thinking about that you pretend that you all a family they love the kids and 
spending time with the children. You go into a pretense arena until you got realms of pretension. You got uh, dimensions of pretension. You got uh, levels of pretensions and your mind is divided equally between all of these different thoughts all of these different feelings and you never rest you never i mean you're sick all the time you're sad all the time you're mad all the time you're confused all the time and when you laugh you haven't had a good belly laugh in a long time then you feel guilty you used to feel happy about feeling good but now you feel guilty for feeling good you feel guilty when good things happen you can't believe it when someone give you a compliment you think now they must be up to something or when something good you're looking behind the good waiting for the fall waiting for the punchline because good has been taken away from you happiness has been taken away from you harmony has been taken away from you and all because the narcissist love bomb you for three to six months because that was supposed to last a lifetime well this time is being interrupted this time is being tore up. This time is being facet by uh, 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 discriminative things that you would normally tolerate and you're tolerating. But the one thing about it is everyone can come to a place of conclusion. Everyone can come to a place where it is enough. You know that if you don't stop at this point, you're going to lose yourself. If you don't quit, at this point, it's going to be over for you. You know that you are a person, you're all in and you're all or you're all out. And you know this, you need to be all out because you was all in. Everything is going, your strength is going, your dream is going. And when you look in your eyes and you see the place that is distant and the place that is so far away, then to, it's always nighttime, even in the early mornings of your life. It's always nighttime. It's time to make a decision. You have to make a decision for yourself to live. You can no longer just tolerate for the sake of love because it's only you loving because the narcissist is intrigued with himself and herself and they love the way you love them they love the way you're committed to them they love what you sacrifice for them they love the way you give it up for them because it always tell them that they are worth it because they got this slew of unworthiness on the inside of them and their life feel like a sewage system there's no gala there's no happiness and when you seem happy it tears them. It rips them. It shreds them because they know happiness by what you mirror and not what they experience. They can't produce what they do not possess and they do not possess happiness. They do not possess love so they can't produce it. You produce it and they have to always be in thievery. They have to steal it from you. They have to manipulate it from you. And when they are planning a new supply and the new supply seem a certain way, they will get you to mirror the way they should be and the way they should act because they don't know how to do it. So they can go and present that to the new supply. Not only was the, the narcissist training you, but you was also training the narcissist. Not only was the narcissist teaching you pain and torment, endurance, but you taught the narcissist what it takes to maintain a relationship, the sacrifice that should be given. Not that they're going to give it. It's what they expect for you to give. So when you go to uh, uh, dissonance, division, disharmony, incongruity, separation, just the diehard aspect of everything good, it's time for you to decide. You have to look in the mirror and see the light in your eyes again that comes with a choice, a very difficult choice. And the difficult choice is, I will not hide within myself. I will not be have the narcissistic trait where I'm hiding within myself to cut out my reality. But I'm going to live my reality to the utmost. I am worth that. Say it every day. I am worth that. 
I can get over my pain. I have a right to happiness and I am worth it. Dissonance don't have to be in your life. You can be happy. You can be joyful. You are awesome and you can dream again. The light can come back in your eyes again and you won't look like you are just existing. You will begin to look like you're living. We deserve this.